here we have a rational function and our denominator is already factored for us. Um, you'll notice that this x minus 1 factor has an exponent of 3. And that's going to affect how we set up the partial fraction decomposition. So what we're going to do, uh, we've got our factored form already. Um, each, the x and the x minus 1 are both linear factors. So we know that we're going to have uh, an x and we, this x minus 1 to the 3. Uh, we actually need to work our way up to the exponent. Okay, whatever factor you have, you need a, a fraction with each power up to and including the power that's there. Okay, and because x and x minus 1 are linear, that means we're going to get constants on top. So a, b, c, and d. Okay, so this is the form of the partial fraction decomposition for this fraction. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by the denominator x times x minus 1 cubed. Okay, x times x minus 1 cubed. So on the left side of the equation, that is just going to cancel out that whole denominator. And we're left with just the x squared plus 1. On the right side of the equation, we take each fraction and multiply it by that. So a over x times x times x minus 1 cubed, the x will cancel. And we're left with a times x minus 1 cubed. For the second fraction, b over x minus 1, we're going to have b. The x minus 1 will cancel with one of the x minus 1s here. We have an x. And then we're left with two of the x minus 1 factors here. So x minus 1 squared. Okay. Similarly, for this c term, uh, x minus 1 squared will cancel. And we'll be left with the x and just one of the x minus 1s. And finally, for this last term, the x minus 1 cubed cancels out completely, and we just have d times x. All right, now to solve for our constants a, b, c, and d. Um, an easy thing we can do is always plug in zeros of the original denominator. So that's x equals 0 and x equals 1. Okay, those are the two zeros of this denominator. If you plug in x equals 0, you just get 1 on the left side equals. And now every term on the right side that has a factor of x, well, when you plug 0 into those, you just get 0 for the whole thing. So we're just left with a times 0 minus 1 cubed. Okay, so that's uh, 1 equals uh, negative a. In other words, a is equal to negative 1. Plugging x equals 1 in, we have 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. And then every term here that has an x minus 1 as a factor, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0, and that's going to be 0. So all of these terms disappear, and we're just left with d times 1, which is, of course, just d. So now we know a equals negative 1, and we know d is equal to 2. This next spot, though, is where it uh, doesn't become so easy. <laughs> um, we can't just cancel out everything except for b or everything except for c uh, with any easy number of x. So what we're going to do now um, is expand the right side of this equation uh, completely. All right, so everything that's being multiplied out, we're going to expand it. So on the left side, we have our x squared plus 1. On the right side, we have x minus 1 cubed times a, which is negative 1. So let me go ahead and just write that over here on the side what that is. So x minus 1 cubed, and then we have a negative 1 in front of that. Well, you need to be able to multiply this whole thing out, and that takes a little bit of work. I'm going to kind of go through it kind of quickly here. Uh, x minus 1 cubed is just x minus 1 times itself three times. And uh, I'll leave the negative out. Let's do these two first. Uh, that's x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we have times the uh, x minus 1. And if we multiply uh, x by that whole thing, we have uh, x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. And then multiply negative 1 by that whole thing, you get negative x squared plus 2x uh, minus 1. Okay. You can combine your like terms, so those two combine and those two combine, 
and bring the negative in, and you end up with a negative x cubed uh, plus 3x squared minus 3x um, and then plus 1. So that right there is this expanded form right there. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here, negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now that was just this one. We also need to expand the other three terms here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just take this work here, and we're just going to make it nice and small. It's still there so you can see it. Um, but now we've got some space. This B term, expanding that, that's pretty straightforward. I'll let you work through the details on that um, on your own. You get uh, bx cubed minus 2bx squared uh, plus bx. Then we can expand this C term. We get uh, plus cx squared minus cx. And then we have plus dx. And we know d is 2, so that's plus uh, 2x. All right, this next step is where we start to combine all the like terms that we have. So uh, on the left, or sorry, on the right side, we've got this negative x cubed, and we've also got this bx cubed. So we're going to combine those and uh, fracture the x cubed out. So that gives us a negative 1 plus b times x cubed. Okay, then we're going to combine our x squared terms. We have this 3x squared minus 2bx squared and plus cx squared. So we'll do the same thing. We will factor the x squared out. We get 3 minus 2b plus c times x squared. Okay, then we have uh, the x terms. We've got negative 3x plus bx minus cx plus 2x. So same thing, factor the x out, and we have a negative 3 uh, plus b minus c plus 2 times x. And then finally, we've got our constant term, which is just this one, this plus 1. All right, now the reason I did that is because I'm comparing this actually to the left side of the equation. And I'm going to color code this left side. I've got an x squared term, okay, which was blue on the right. So I've got uh, x squared. And then I've got this plus 1, which is just a constant, which was an orange on the right side, so plus 1. Okay, so now we equate each term on the right side to its corresponding term on the left side. Okay. What that means is here on the right side I've got this x cubed term, but I don't have any x cubed terms on the left side. And what that means is that the x cubed term actually has to be 0, no matter what x is. That means that this coefficient, negative 1 plus b, has to equal 0. Okay, that way it matches the left side. The left side doesn't have any x cubed. Okay, I do the same thing with the x squared term. The coefficient of the x squared, which is 3 minus 2b plus c, has to be equal to the coefficient of the x squared on the left, which is just a 1 right there. So this has to equal 1. Okay. Same thing with the x term. The coefficient there, negative 3 plus b minus c plus 2, has to equal the coefficient of x over here on the left. There is no x here, so that means it has to be 0. And then the constant term, I just have, well, that 1 has to equal 1. I don't, I'm not going to write that because it doesn't really tell me anything. So I've got this system of equations here, and I can use it to solve for my unknowns, which are just b and c in this case. Uh, this first equation is nice and easy to solve for b. I get b equals 1. And now that I know that, I can go ahead and just plug that into uh, either one of these other two equations. I'm going to plug it into this equation right here. And we've got uh, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0, minus c. So I just have negative c equals 0. In other words, c is equal to 0. So now I know b and c, and I already had a and d. So I'm ready to plug those all into my uh, partial fraction decomposition right here. Okay, so I had a over x, which is negative 1 over x, negative 1 over x, uh, and then I had b, 
which is 1 over x minus 1, plus 1 over x minus 1, and then c, oops, uh, c is 0, so this term here is just gone, and then d is 2, so I've got 2 over x minus 1 cubed, plus 2 over x minus 1. And this right here is the partial fraction decomposition of that original thing, which was x squared plus 1 over x times x minus 1 cubed. So x squared plus 1 over x times x minus 1 cubed. So there's our partial fraction decomposition uh, for that rational function.